Hello, this is D and I'm back with another video. Microsoft unveiled a brand new version of their DX12 API, dubbed DX12 Ultimate. DX12 Ultimate will be available for developers on the Xbox Series X and PC and I honestly believe that DX12 Ultimate will give Microsoft's next generation system even more advantages over the PlayStation 5. DX12 Ultimate confirms features that are not present on Sony's next generation system, features such as variable rate shading tier 2 and DirectX Ray Tracing 1.1 which is the latest ray tracing technique. Instead of going over the feature set myself, I decided to let Microsoft's GDC-like presentation play instead. Now this presentation is not too long, approximately nine minutes, and I will be in the comment section below to answer and hear what you guys think of Microsoft's latest DX12 API. Like, share, and sub to the channel, and without further ado, here is Microsoft's DX12 Ultimate presentation. So far, we introduced DirectX 12 Ultimate, which includes DXR Tier 1.1, VRS, Mesh Shader, and Sampler Feedback. We discussed that all these features will be supported consistently across PC and Xbox Series X in 2020, and provide unprecedented opportunities to the whole ecosystem. Now let's take a deeper dive on more technical details on how game developers should think about it. First of all, we will introduce a new D3D feature level 12.2 in an upcoming Windows 10 update, which requires the same set of features as found in DirectX 12 Ultimate. Game developers can start with feature specs and samples on our GitHub. We will also publish all talks today to our YouTube channel. When you're coding, Pixel Windows will be available to you, supporting all DirectX 12 Ultimate features. Be sure to go to the download page to get the latest version. Last but not the least, come to our Discord channel to discuss DirectX 12 Ultimate and everything about the Windows graphics platform. Now let's talk about the first feature today, DXR Tier 1.1. Back in 2018, Microsoft worked with hardware partners to design and release DXR which brings never-seen-before photorealism to a long list of games. As more and more developers use DXR in their games, we receive similar feedback from developers. Developers want more programmability inside acceleration structure traversal, and to access ray tracing from existing shader stages. They also wanted to lower CPU overhead in streaming scenarios when new shaders need to be added to a state object that is already being used rather than have to create a state object that is mostly redundant with an existing one. We explored several options based on feedback from game developers and hardware partners and developed a set of additional features which were grouped under DXR Tier 1.1. The first addition to DXR is inline ray tracing. Inline ray tracing is an alternative form of ray tracing that doesn't use any separate dynamic shaders or shader tables. It is available in any shader stage, including compute shaders, pixel shaders, and so on. Inline ray tracing gives apps more control during traversal, such as enumerating candidate hits, accept or reject the result of a query. Note that both the dynamic shading and inline forms of ray tracing use the same opaque acceleration structures. Here is a trivial example to show how inline ray tracing works. Inline ray tracing in shaders start with instantiating a ray query object as a local variable, acting as a state machine for ray query with a relatively large state footprint. The shader interacts with the ray query object's method to advance the query through an acceleration structure and query traversal information. In this example of simple shadow, the ray query object is instantiated with op optional ray flex to declare that it only wants to visit opaque triangles and to stop traversing at the first hit. Then the shader starts the traversal by calling proceed. The API hides access to the acceleration structure, leaving it to the hardware and driver. All necessary app code surrounding this fixed function acceleration structure accesses for handling both enumerated candidate hits and the results of a query 
can be self-contained in the shader driving the query object. All necessary app code surrounding this fixed function acceleration structure accesses for handling both enumerated candidate hits and the result of a query can be self-contained in the shader driving the ray query. Inline ray chasing can be useful for many reasons. Perhaps the developers know the scenario is simple enough that the overhead of dynamic shader scheduling is not worthwhile. For example, a well-constrained way of calculating shadows. It could be convenient and efficient to query an acceleration structure from a shader that doesn't support dynamic shader-based rays, like a compute shader. It might be helpful to combine dynamic shader-based ray tracing with the inline form. Some raging shader sages, like intersection shaders and any hit shaders, doesn't even support tracing rays via dynamic shader-based ray tracing. But the inline form is available everywhere. Both the original dynamic shader-based ray tracing found in DXL 1.0 and the new inline ray tracing found in DXL 1.1 are valuable for different purposes. Scenarios with many complex shaders will run better with dynamic shader-based ray tracing as opposed to using massive inline ray tracing uber shaders. Meanwhile, scenarios that have a minimum shading complexity or very few shaders will run better with inline ray tracing. As of DXR 1.1, developers not only have the choice of either approach, but can even combine them both within a single renderer. Hybrid approaches are aided by the fact that both flavors of DXR ray tracing share the same acceleration structure format and are driven by the same underlying traversal state machine. Best of all, gamers with DirectX 12 Ultimate hardware can be assured that no matter what kind of ray tracing solution the developer chooses to use, they will have a great experience. Besides inline ray chasing, DXR 1.1 also allows games to grow state objects more efficiently. Let's look at this sample. You have a ray chasing PSO with 1000 hit groups. Now you enter a new level and need to add a new hit group. In DXR 1.0, you need to delete the old one, then create a new one with 1001 hit groups which takes time to compile. With add to state objects in DXR 1.1, a new state object can be made by adding shaders to an existing shader state object with its CPU overhead proportional only to what is being added, not the overall size of the new object. There are a few more functions added to DXR 1.1. Dispatch rays call via execute indirect enables shaders on the GPU to generate a list of dispatch race calls, including their individual parameters. Then the list can execute without an intervening round trip back to the CPU. This could help with adaptive ray tracing scenarios like shader-based culling, sorting, classification, and refinement. The geometry index intrinsic is a convenience to allow shaders to distinguish geometries with bottom-level acceleration structures. DXR 1.1 also added a few ray flags. Implementations might make pipeline optimizations knowing that one of the primitive types can be skipped everywhere. Pixel windows offer tremendous help when developers are using DXR. For example, when game developers select the dispatch race event, they can view details of shader tables in the pipeline window. Similarly, they can also visualize acceleration structure in the same window. To summarize what we have discussed so far, DXR brings a new level of graphics realism to video games using consumer hardware, which previously was only achievable in the movie industry. Today, we announced DXR Tier 1.1 based on developer and hardware partners' feedback, which adds functionalities that help game developers better utilize DXR. Since its release in late 2018, ray tracing solutions based on DXR have been adopted and proved by many AAA games. As part of their X12 Ultimate, DXR and DXR Tier 1.1 will receive wide hardware support across PC and on the upcoming Xbox Series X. And you can start coding today. Game developers can find feature specs and samples on GitHub then upgrade to the latest Windows 10 OS and SDK and download the latest picks on Windows. 
To use DXR to 1.1, game developers need to join the Windows 10 Insider program for OS and SDK preview for 20H1 until it is released to the public. Driver support by GeForce 20 series is available today for DXR 1.0 and coming soon for DXR Tier 1.1. And don't forget to come to our Discord channel to raise your questions.